Hannah. Please give them a warm welcome. Good morning. I am glad to see you again. I am glad to be with you for worship the same God. Um, thank God for everybody. I pray for um, everybody. God reward you all you do sacrifice in Christian Embassy and Romania and beyond. Uh, I have one greetings for you in this morning. Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend defend you. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And my baby. I found her in Romania. Pastor Tim and I have uh, a lot in common. <laughs> My name is Roy, and I'm your friend. I am big and cuddly, basically a nice guy, and uh, I'm a lover of people, a lover of God, <clears throat> and um, I'd like to talk to you, please, and two parts, number, part number one, about the mission in Romania, and part number two, to ask you a question. Part number one, we'd like to address, first of all, why we do what we do. Rather than tell you what we do, it's important to know why we are doing it. It's not to become big, well-known, popular people. We have no interest in that. We do have interest in being effective, but uh, we seek no position. Uh, I've been a pastor, been there, done that, got the T-shirt, not going back. <laughs> uh, but we are in Romania. Why? Well, Romania is a strategic nation. I believe that God has ordained through Romania the gospel to go throughout Europe to bring Europe back to Jesus Christ. And Romania is the, uh, the spark, the lighthouse that will do that. Uh, we are there. Why? It's because of what we believe. There are things that we believe that uh, impel us to do certain things. We believe in the truth of the Word of God, the Bible. The Bible is the inspired word of God. We believe that through faith in Jesus Christ, a person can have eternal life. We believe that we can make a difference. A snowflake isn't very significant, but a snowstorm can close the town. And as we work together, God can do great things. We believe that, indeed, as I said, Romania is the key nation to bring Europe back to Christ. And we believe that God is forming a team. A team. A man by himself can build a cabin. A team can build a skyscraper. And I notice, to my left, in this direction, there is a magnificent edifice arising out of a dream, a vision, and uh, just needs some water. <laughs> Amen. And God can provide that in many ways. You remember the preacher, he got up and he said, Lord, he said, uh, folks, we need, uh, let's use $54,000 for an example. He said, folks, we need $54,000 and we already have it. And uh, People of Florida and so on. He said, yes, and it's in your pocket. <laughs> this church is an extraordinary church. I believe, I have perceived, and I've been around the block a few times, that uh, 
your pastors are different. They're a cut different. I don't want to say above, but they're just different. There is anointing. There is a mentality. There is a clarity. There is a a, a love, a, a, a positive projection from them. I mean, they look good. They speak good. They are good, and you are blessed. I'll get an extra 10 bucks for that later. <laughs> the key, the key, the driving force is for God so love, not hate, not trying to punish, no. God so loved the world that he gave the best, his only begotten son, that whoever does one thing, not understand all the theology or, or no, no, just one thing, whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, big faith, great faith, no, just the sight of a mustard seed will do. Whoever believes in him, two things will happen. Number one, they will not perish. Number two, they have, help me now, everlasting life. Yes, that's why we're there. That's what we believe. We believe that there is an empty tomb. We believe that Jesus Christ really died, really was crucified, really was pierced with that, that, that spear, really was taken down from the cross. He really was put in that tomb. That is absolutely the truth. And that he rose again from the dead. And he's alive today, and he's still transforming lives. We believe that. What we do? Well, we take magnificent men and women like that, and we endeavor to train them. Our focus is in training. We can't do the job that's necessary. But what we can do is help others to do what God has called them to do, to bring our experience, our knowledge, and impart it as best we can to them so that they can do what God has called them to do, but do it more effectively. That is our desire. How do we do that? Well, we, we do that by doing conferences. Uh, Conferences means that we bring them together for a day, three days, five days, whatever happens to be appropriate for the people and the time. Uh, and we, we do some instruction, some teaching. Yes, we, uh, we have a good time. We have good fellowship. We do have good Romanian food. Some of you don't know about Saramala, but Sister Rodica knows possibly things. Most of them don't. You, you probably have tasted some reasonable facsimile of Pletizia. But we have good Romanian thin, some people call them crepes and pancakes. But we stuff it with chocolate or something like that. Oh, yes, so we have a good time. We even work with the youth. The youth. We have had seminary students uh, training them. One seminary student told me that for the first time in his life, now he's in seminary, not cemetery. <coughs> and we ministered to him. We laid our hands on him. We gathered around him. We prayed for him. That was the first time in his life that he ever had an experience of somebody just praying directly for him with the laying on of hands. Another one said that he hadn't cried for years. He cried by the touch of the master's hand. And all the good times of sitting around the campfire and chatting, singing, sharing testimonies. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, how do we do this? Part two is Americans. We need uh, ministers, not not beginners. We need seasoned men of God who can come and impart to them. We're all different, you know. Uh, not everybody is as 
elegant as your pastors. You know, they, uh, they just project elegance, beautiful, powerful elegance, you know. And I'm sure they can cut it up too. <laughs> but uh, there's a, some meal, some dance with the tambourine, some grow beards like our brother Jim Kerwin. But there he is teaching in a public school. We can't do that here. We can do it in the former communistic nation of Romania. And so we do conferences. We bring pastors and we have interpreters. There's no problem with uh, doing that. <clears throat> And um, we have distinguished gentlemen like your own George Barm right there. Uh, yes, amen. A magnificent, fine gentleman, sacrificially drove all the way to the Czech Republic and back. But when he was there, he ministered and uh, to the, um, the other picture with the young lady in the foreground, uh, her, her, her father is here. I don't see him this morning. But her, her name is Corinne Deshaibe. Yes. And um, so she was with us for six months. And um, women, women are not supposed to speak to men in Romania. I mean, they're not allowed to preach or to speak, but they can't preach to men. Uh, so rather than complain what we can't do, we do what we can do. And we do it to the max. And so what we did, we got the women together. We got two, three hundred women together. And we turned loose on those women, our sister, Pastor Angela Reed from New York. Now, Angela Reed is out of the box. Like your pastor, female. <clears throat> and we let her loose. Oh, boy. She, she was so filled with the Spirit of God. She was filled with the love of God. She had a passion. She had a desire. People wept as she ministered. People were healed as she ministered. It was so good. Did I tell you that she's black? They love the color black. I got some tell stories to tell you about that. Well, let me tell you a little story about my black brother from New York who came over there, and he was preaching in one church, and one woman, a Romanian woman, after he got preached, she came forward to greet him, and she planted one kiss right on his lips. <laughs> oh, yeah, incredible, but beautiful. And uh, we even had men call the pastor and ask if they could go and sit in on what was happening in that woman's conference. And this is my wish list. <laughs> I believe that um, Pastor Tim sent a, uh, his first missionary uh, team to the nation of Romania. I believe that he also married a Romanian woman, an extraordinary woman. And uh, I believe that, therefore, he is destined for it. I have been here. I've listened to him preach. I've listened on him. He is a good preacher. He is a solid preacher. <laughs> he does not beat people over the head, but he is a nurturer. He lifts. He's a positive preacher. I think Rodita may have taught him that, but, I mean, it's a great... <laughs> Great ministry. I believe that he is, uh, their, their elegance serves a purpose to reach leadership, to reach those that perhaps some others cannot reach. And uh, so I, that's on my wish list, and I believe that uh, that will happen. It's hard work, and sometimes, you know, you just got to take a break and relax for a while, as our brother Rick Dill there just said, <laughs> he fell asleep in the chair. But, you know, that's a natural, but there's also spiritual rest. And uh, uh, in one of our conferences, there was prayer offered. And there's a pastor down before the Lord. I mean, his body was just shaking like a leaf in the wind. And his wife ministering to him and several of his sons. He's got three sons gathered around there to see Daddy be touched by the hand of God. You hear that, young man over there? Okay. Uh, it's going to take a team effort. Uh, this is, it's too big. 
My job is not only to go. My job is kind of a John the Baptist role. I prepare the way. I build the relationships. I seek uh, and uh, look for opportunities because the job is too big. Um, I just can't do it. But I'm there to prepare the way for others to do it. I seek no position. I love what I do. This is what I was born to do. This is why God put me on earth, to prepare places for other people, to help other people be that all that they can be. And I'm very glad for the response. We have a job for everybody. If you, God put it in your heart to come to Romania or something of that nature, come with your pastors and so on, whatever your skill is, we have a place for you. Uh, God anoints people not only to preach, but like our brother uh, Techio over there, Brother David, you know, he's anointed to do that. He's good. You don't have to preach in order to be anointed of God. You can do what God has given you to do and do it with excellence because God called you to do that. Yes, we don't have the music ministry that you have, but we do the best we can with what we've got because the principle is don't complain about what you don't have. Use what you do have. Remember David in the sling? Remember Moses with just the staff? Okay, and if, if the musicians don't show up, you just scrape the barrel, and that's your humble servant right there, uh, yodeling along. Uh, um, you made them in a beautiful tones, but it was a lot of love. <laughs> and uh, what do we do? Well, we work with men and women of God and uh, help them. How? Three areas prim primarily. Leadership, personal evangelism, worship. Leadership is important. Being godly and preaching well and so on, that's good. But you've got to couple that with the desire to lift people, to help people, not to domineer them or keep them under the thumb. Lift them up. Well, what if they get better than me? Well, a rising tide lifts all the boats. If you're lifting, rising the tide, God will take care of you. What if they love them more than they love me? You just do what God has told you to do, and the, God, the, the people will love you for doing that. Number two, personal evangelism. Wherever you are, there is an evangelistic field, and most evangelism should happen outside of, not within the church walls. Can I get an amen? amen. If I get boring, just give me an amen. Okay. I asked one brother, I said, if, uh, if, um, if I get boring, just raise your hand, you know, and I'll talk faster and louder. Well, at one point, he felt he needed to worship the Lord, so <laughs> I talked faster and louder. <laughs> worship is more than reading so uh, songs, uh, hymns out of a hymn book or on a screen. It's the opening of the heart and spirit to touch the Father and for the Father to touch the... So that's what we do. Where do we do it? Well, we do it at this place called Apavia. What is Apavia? It's called living Apa, water, living via, living water Apavia in uh, Romania. Um, <clears throat> they, and here is the uh, front of the magnificent house that God enabled us to buy in 2004. That's over 10 years ago. The price was $5,000. It was a burned out shell. They heard American wanted to buy it. The price rose to 6000 I bought it. I grabbed it because I saw the potential. And today we sleep 50 people there. And uh, you'll see in a moment um, how that's going. The upper church there is 1,100 members. That's where I found my wife, Melania. And... Um, we get opportunity to minister to large churches and small churches as well. It really doesn't matter why. God, sometimes I drive for a, two hours to get to a church to preach 40 minutes and then drive two hours back again. I said, Lord, uh, is this a invest, good investment of my time and finances? And this is what the Lord put in my heart. Just get one person. Everywhere you go, just get one man, one woman 
where the light turns on, where the, 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 there's an encounter between themselves and the, and the Holy Spirit, and it's worth it. A thousand times over, go get that one. And that one can change the world. Amen? So that took care of that. Well, how's travel in Romania? Well, $7 a gallon, thank you very much. Um, uh, but uh, never have we not gone someplace because we didn't have enough, in our case, diesel. So God has opened doors from a humble beginning because of the, the partnership of others uh, God has opened doors throughout Europe, and uh, here we are in the Czech Republic. And I believe that Romania is called to be like a launching pad, like a, a landing ground, where from here God can launch um, people, ministries, Rodikas, Pastor Tim, Dr. Lambert, you know, send them out because these people have spirit-filled, powerful ministries that today Europe needs to hear this. Europe is no longer Christian. It's, uh, as one uh, other missionary said, Europe is pagan. They need to be brought back, and I believe that through Romania, that's why we're there. So God has opened Serbia, Germany, Austria, the Czech Republic, France, and um, now for the first time we're going into Poland, by, I mean, we are going, not me, but somebody working through the ministry, through a relationship that we were able to open up, is going into Poland. And since I made this PowerPoint, uh, uh, some other nations have opened up, like Spain, Italy, Belgium, and going back into other places in France. And so the, the people are not resistant to the gospel. No, we don't want, no, that does not happen. Here's, here's the secret. You go with love. You go with respect. You don't talk down to people. You, you, you build a relationship with them, a positive relationship. Not if you don't accept Jesus, you're going to hell kind of thing. No, no. But uh, you, you minister to them. They will listen to you. At the right time when the seeds have been sown and the doors will be open, and the doors are open, and we're very grateful for that. Where are we going? What are we doing? What's our vision? Well, <clears throat> through the significant help of this church, in the middle of your building program, your pastors and this church sowed into the ministry that they enabled us to buy. This property that we call the Land of Promise is seven-tenths of an acre. It's high ground. You can see that we look down at the village there. This is the high ground of the village. And the, the, the horizon is the limitation of your visibility on a clear day. <clears throat> this is the front of the building. And uh, we don't have growing pains. We have growing blessings. I pray that every ministry will have uh, the, the kind of uh, challenges that uh, there are too many people coming. We need more room. You have that challenge. That's why that's going on there. That's why the 50 whatever thousand dollars are going to come in for the war. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. Why? Okay, here, follow me here. 2005, we did our first conference. Uh, 16 attended. Melania attended. She had her eye on it. <laughs> oh, I hear an objection over there. Okay, okay. <laughs> The wise guy, she calls me. Okay. 2005, we did our first pastor's conference. 2005. 2006, a bunch of teenagers, youth, Americans, and Romanians together. There we were doing road work as a public servant. Uh, the, the high school class came in 2007, 20 strong. 2008, excuse me, 30 youth. 2008, again, a different group of 30 youth. Romanians and Americans are mixed. Um, as the twig is bent, so goes the, tr the tree. You know, with the, uh, you saw the, the, the girls and the boys at the beginning here. Powerful ministry, changing lives. 
never be the same again. Respect for authority, uh, basic uh, life truths will never be the same again. In 2010, 52 youth and leaders. We built our conference hall for 40 people, and in 2010, we're already maxing out. 2012, 72, we packed them in there. This particular conference was videotaped and sent by way of uh, Alpha and Omega television throughout the southeastern Europe. And um, 2012 and 13, over 100. Where did you put them, Roy? We found room. We made it work. Wherever there was a carpet, there was a sleeping bag stuffed with one kid. <laughs> and so on. So why do we need to expand? Because the need is there. Why do you need to expand? The need is there. Powerful ministry, growing up, doing in their communities what God has called them to do. And so this was one of the buildings on the land of promise, we call it. And uh, I saw not cattle and the chickens in there and the hay storage, but I saw a one-bedroom house. And there it is under construction, and uh, pretty soon there'll be a young couple, I'll introduce you to them later, who will be living there. This is a satellite eyes view of um, our village, Peshtera, and there the yellow circle is where we are now, Apavia, and now the next circle will be the land of promise, and that's where we are. How long will it take you to get from one place to the other. Well, most of you will do it in 10 minutes. Uh, your humble servant here right now, a little longer. But I may be slow, but I get there. <laughs> and uh, so on. So it's a golden investment. Your primary focus here, dear saints, of course, is the home ground. You've got to have a launching pad and so on. And so that's your, that's your focus. But um, uh, thank God as, as uh, partnering with us, uh, we're interested more in the ministry than in the money. I want this man and this woman to minister in Romania and bring some of you with them. That is strategic. That is important. And so with gratefulness, you see the young man uh, with his uh, fiance uh, with him. That's our nephew. He has addicted himself to the ministry. He's now working with us, has been for four years or so, and now he's taking himself a bride that about a week after we return to Romania, there'll be a wedding, and they're going to live in that one-bedroom cottage on the land of promise. Isn't that absolutely adorable? And so we thank you, brothers and sisters, and that's part one. Was that okay? Okay, thank you.